I would like to say hello to everybody. My name is Suzanne, and this is the very first webinar of Share for Rare. And today we're exploring in what ways social media can be used to create compelling and powerful messages for certain groups of people. So that can be patient organizations, that can be politicians, that can be wherever you want. We start a little bit with introducing ourselves and the organizations that we work for. And secondly, I will hand over the microphone to Estibalis and she will talk more about how you can create those target groups and how you can craft those key messages. I do want to tell you that this webinar will be recorded and the slides will be sent to you afterwards. So you don't need to write and listen at the same time. So you can just fully focus on what we have to say. And um, if, we have, if you have any questions, you can always ask them in the chat. So first of all, I'm Susie M. Bakker, and I'm the communications coordinator of the World Duchenne Organization. The World Duchenne Organization is actually a co collaboration of patient organizations all over the world, and we're trying to improve the lives of people affected by Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And we do that by promoting certain research activities or providing people with the right information. And one of the ways that we're doing that is via Share for Rare. And um, we also have on this workshop Begonia. She's a patient engagement coordinator at the hospital of saint jean de deux I'm sorry, I will probably pronounce it wrong. <laughs> and Sibelis, and she's the communications manager of that hospital. And now that we've introduced ourselves, I think we will go on to the next slide. Because if you have any tip, or any option or whatever you want to say, you can always Twitter and use the hashtag S4RWebinar. So if you have any questions or feedback or comments, you can always tell them via the S4RWebinar hashtag. Um, just as I said, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat panel. Just make sure that you are asking them to everyone and not just to some person. And if you have any, if you, want to know any tips that you can look at the bottom corner. For example, you can see that bluish greenish bottom that says these slides will be sent to you after the webinar. Okay, now that that is all done, I'd like to talk about the agenda. So what we're going to do today is just have a brief explanation of all social media platforms and how you can use them and which messages you can create in order to and engage your audience with the right message. Afterwards, we'll have some tips and tricks and helpful resources in order to make your social media more effectful. And afterwards, Begonia will share something about the project Share for Rare and what it does. And then after that, we will have some questions and answers. So if you have any questions to ask, you can just type them in the chat box and then we will ask them and answer them later on. So now that that is everything done, I will give my microphone to Estibaliz and um, she will explain more about patient engagement. Yeah, as told you, I'm going to talk to you about social media and uh, uh, patient uh, engagement. So uh, first of all, why? why a webinar about social media on rare diseases? Why is this useful? Why do we need these days social media for patient engagement? First of all, social media are a low threshold for people who get to know your patient organization before actively engaging with it. So it's the new word of mouth that builds your brand and gives them the opportunity to get to know you better at a pace they set themselves. Secondly, it gives you an opportunity to engage with your audience wherever they are in the world. If you dedicate a few hours a day on social media sharing your story and what you believe in, you will build your brand relatively low in costs compared to other forms of, of advertisement. And it is definitely the new press and television and, is, and it is mostly free. So it's a good idea to, to use social media nowadays. Let's go to the next slide. As we have mentioned, there are different kinds of social networks that can be used 
uh, to reach our tar target audience, patients, industry, researchers. Now we are going to point out the most relevant features of these different platforms. Facebook is the most famous and most used social network in the world, and it is normally used by people older than 25, more or less. You can post very long messages and you can add videos, pictures and any other kind of media files, tag other profiles and even create polls. So you have many things that you can do on, on Facebook. And the audience that you can reach throughout uh, Facebook is usually non-scientific and non-medical. Parents, uh, patients, caregivers, etc. And the language employed on this network tends to be informal and simple. The existence of private groups is of great interest for patients' organizations. Let's go to Twitter. Twitter is very different, it's quite different. It, co it consists on tweeting, this is posting small messages or tweets on the wall, up to 280 characters, more or less. It is basically a microblogging platform. You can choose who to follow and you can make a list of the most interesting profiles, tag people, retweet their publications, share. It is very ephemeral, but if your tweet is good, it may go viral. So go for it. The audience is diverse because people use Twitter for very different reasons. Fun, uh, politics, dissemination, advertising. It is definitely a good platform to get informed in a quick manner. LinkedIn is the most widespread professional network. It is commonly used for recruit recruiting, but companies and institutions also use it to drive their results, raise brand awareness, and educate potential customers on products and services. You have the option to create private groups or company pages too. It can be very effective to share events and company outcomes on LinkedIn. And language and format are much more formal than on Facebook, obviously. And you can tag people or other companies or search using hashtags like you do on Twitter. YouTube is essentially a video sharing website. It gives you the opportunity to create a channel and upload videos of your own. This can be evaluated and commented and people can sus subscribe to your personal channel. This platform is extremely popular among young people, born after the mid-90s, more or less. Nowadays, videos and video blogs are a powerful tool to send effective messages. And sometimes it is worth spending some time creating a nice and short video to increase engagement. So think about it. Last but not least, there is Instagram, a photo and video sharing mobile app. It is the social network preferred by teenagers, but the user's age range is wide. It gives you the opportunity to add filter, filters and other modifications to, to your pictures. The content on the timeline is very ephemeral, but more ephemeral are the Instagram stories, which are eliminated from your profile after 24 hours. However, this Instant stories have become quite popular and they are a useful, tool, a useful tool to spread news and you can check which users interact with what you publish. So this gives you information, valuable information. Once we have a rough idea about uh, each social network, it is time to learn how to deliver the correct message to your audience. What do I want to tell my audience and how? First of all, you need to identify your audience or key stakeholders. Once you have done this, you can proceed to choose which uh, social network suits you best and then you can start creating a, a message. By identifying key stakeholders, we mean mapping important groups of people that can influence your organization. That can be healthcare professionals, researchers, patients, regulators, and so on.
If you want to identify your stakeholders, try to answer first these questions, the following questions. One, who can influence the way we operate? Who can impact or be impacted by our organization? Three, who can help us understand our issue or challenge? And four, who is interested in our success? Think about this. There are many online tools to map your stakeholders, but one way is to map them by an influence and interest scale. It looks like this, okay? By mapping your stakeholders and prioritizing them, you discover which group you want to focus on because that's where, you're, that's where you get most bang for your buck. So don't worry about writing it down. We'll send you the slides after the webinar, okay? There are many online tools, uh, sorry. Once, once you know your stakeholders, you want to find out on what social media platform you want to reach them, right? Let's say you are an organization for neuromuscular disorders and you have a few segments, for example, patients and carers, patient organizations, pharmaceutical industry, clinicians and other healthcare professionals. Let's see, professional adults like clinicians over, 20, um, over 30, 35 sorry, make up the largest part on LinkedIn, whereas Twitter and Facebook are primarily used by young adults. Teenagers and children tend to dive into YouTube and Snapchat or Instagram. And take a look now at your influence interest scale and focus on three platforms, okay? Only three. For example, young adults and primarily female, Instagram is your jam. One example, World Duchenne Organization, for example, they use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Facebook to reach the families, Twitter for healthcare professionals to report events, and LinkedIn to share scientific news. And finally, YouTube, because they found out that a lot of Duchenne boys and young men are looking for information that, it is, is, that is easily digest digestible. So this World Duchenne Awareness Day, they publish a series of educational videos explaining the best Duchenne care. Bear in mind that yeah. patients and carers are mostly active on Facebook and Twitter, whereas the industry, clinicians, and healthcare professionals are mostly seen on Twitter and LinkedIn. Bear this in mind, okay? If you make, that, if you make that distinction, you can start crafting key messages that you want to spread. And this is the most exciting part, creating a message, an engaging me message. You found your audience, but what are you going to tell them? Each stakeholder has a different intrinsic motivation to stay involved. So you want to deliver different messages with a different tone of voice to different groups within your network. For example, a patient can follow you on Facebook to find information about trials and get emotional support from the community. Whereas a clinician primarily checks your tweets to find out if they are interest, if there are interesting events to attend. You always stay true to your mission or vision, the core belief of your organization. So first, choose the tone of voice, include key, keywords, engaging keywords. You can use questions and polls to uh, raise engagement. You have to be concise and create interesting content. To make this entire social media work a little less time consuming, we have some handy tips. Depending on what social media platform you are working on, you can use different tricks. For example, Facebook. Facebook gives you a nice opportunity to connect with patients and their families and build a community. You can have a Facebook page and create a private group so that page, patients can, can interact. You can also share videos, infographics, etc., to educate your audience. 
always using a non-technical non language, remember. Remember also to use emojis, friendly links, pictures, polls, or GIFs to increase engagement. On Facebook, you can also benefit from the don donation button to receive donations when people visit your page or enable people to fundraise for your organization. Twitter may have a huge scope if you are constant. You have to be very constant on Twitter. By making lists, for example, you can easily group reliable sources without having to constantly search and, and check for you themselves, for, for you, okay? It is mandatory to tag partners for retweets, shares, and follow people back who follow your page in search of a fruitful interaction. You have to interact a lot. You can also search on a certain hashtag and follow the people who pop up. You, you can use Google Trends uh, to identify the popularity of a certain hashtag, for example, and choose the one that reaches the biggest audience. Try always to use short phrases, emojis, and uh, hashtags. Um, these tweets with these uh, components are very successful. So try it, try to do this. LinkedIn will help you reach the professional community. Scientists, clinicians, institutions, pharma industry. That is why the tone must be professional and the contents must be science related always. Scientific papers, events, conferences, meetings, international days, important, protocols, and so on. Use, you can use also LinkedIn to share the outcomes of your organization, these meetings and workshops you do, etc. And then you can also tag companies and key stakeholders to gain more followers. In general, you can employ these useful tips to increase the scope of your social media profiles. The key point always is to interact as much as possible with your audience. And for that purpose, you must tag partners, retweet, share interesting contents. It is essential to identify active users and interact with those. And for this, Twitter lists are very practical, for example. It is interesting to share events, mostly on LinkedIn. Use as much visuals as possible, like videos, GIFs, infographics, as we have already mentioned. Choose nice pictures and remember to use emojis on Facebook and Twitter. They are, they are proved to increase engagement. Do not share long and messy links. Shorten and customize them using Bitly, for example. You cannot use the same language tone to reach all audiences. Whereas on Facebook, you must use a very close and friendly language, LinkedIn, is more serious and professional. Take this into account, okay? The time of publication is also fundamental to reach more people, especially on Facebook and LinkedIn, because Twitter is more, more continuous. On Facebook, it is better to publish after 9 p.m. and maybe also around 2 p.m., mainly from Monday to Thursday. LinkedIn is consulted at first time in the morning during the week, mostly and Twitter is used at any time. To increase followers on Facebook, invite every post liker to like your page. This raises followers, okay? Try to create thematical monthly campaigns. For example, the International Aware Awareness Day of your disease of interest, genetical issues, drugs, etc. And do not forget that your posts must be smartphone, smartphone friendly always because the, the percentage of website visits from mobile devices grew from 57% to 63% between 2016 and 2017. And in the science cat category, it grew a whooping 8%. So a website or profile that is not correctly seen on a smartphone and a smartphone screen will not be successful. Smartphone first. 
Finally, post scheduling. This is crucial. You have to plan your monthly posts far enough in advance and make sure there are no grammar or spelling mistakes and that all links are properly working, okay? All posts must share the same structure, tone, and format. Think of the date, the kind of post you want to, to create, the, your links and your pictures. Think about campaigns. And you can, you can think about special days like the World Jushin Awareness Day, Rare Disease Day, Patriotic Cancer Day. You have many options. Now we will have a look at some examples of patient advocacy organizations that do a great job on social media. Let's go with it. This is Eurodius, a non-profit alliance agglomerating 812 rare disease patient organizations from 70 countries. They are very active on social media, as you can see, and they have 20,000 followers on Twitter which is really, really nice. And they have 25K followers on Facebook. They also own LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube profiles. So have a look at their online activity to get inspired. NORD, National Organization for Rare Disorders, is a hub of the rare disease community connecting patients and patient organizations with other stakeholders in order to drive progress. They are really active online too, having 50K, 55K followers on Facebook and 27K on Twitter. On Facebook, they use uh, fundraising tools to help patients and families. Another example, Global Genes, which is a patient advocacy organization working to eliminate the challenges of rare diseases. They have more than 100,000 followers on Facebook, and this is not easy to achieve. So have a look at them. And they were really, uh, really hard. They worked thoroughly on their contents, and this bears fruit, as you can see. So, Suzanne, we go to the next part. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your explanation. We will now hand it over to Begonia and she will tell something about the Share for Rare project. Begonia, it's all yours. Hello, thank you very much for the people that it's connected here. It's a pleasure to uh, introduce to all of you the Share for Rare project. This is an initiative uh, funded by the European Commission. Share for Rare is a, it's a CAPS project. It stands for that it's a collective awareness platform for social innovation. Uh, the coordinator of this project is Fundació Sant Joan de Déu. We are uh, the research organization linked to Sant Joan de Déu Children's Hospital, and we are the largest pediatric hospital in Spain. Imagine, in this hospital, uh, basically the patients that we attend are children and young people with a rare condition. Approximately 80% of our patients are suffering these conditions. We are learning a lot every day from the families and for sure for the, for the patients about the meaning uh, to live with a rare condition. And for us, it's very important and very crucial the knowledge that patients and families have about the and a specific rare condition. Say this, this project is something that uh, we decided to, to create a long time ago through the experience that we have with the previous uh, initiatives and, and projects. Hospital San Juan de Deu uh, had a long time ago a project with the name Liquid Hospital that was focused in the development of several platforms, address it, to connect people outside of our hospital, to interchange the knowledge, and to offer and bring services to people that perhaps can be uh, attended in our hospital, but with the use of the new technologies and the social media, we can reach them and support them in the process to live with a rare condition. Take this, we consider that the social media, and uh, Stivalit has explained to all of you uh, many interesting uses, it's a nice opportunity to increase uh, the education, to increase the social support, and for sure, 
to uh, offer research opportunities for the patients and their families. These are the three pillars, the three main goals of this new project. And with this proposal, we are at this moment designing a platform, shareforrare.org. It's the website. And in the few, uh, in, in the next uh, months, we are going uh, to have uh, an environment to connect patients and, and families. I'm going to detail uh, in the next slides what are the different proposals of the, of the platforms. The idea of the Share for Rare is to bring to the uh, world, not only to the European countries, because rare conditions are around the world, a platform to connect, to educate, to uh, share experiences, and to collect all the knowledge that patients and families can have to promote research initiatives. If we go to the next slide, here you can see uh, an, uh, a nice view of the platform. As I said, we have three uh, main goals. The first one is about uh, education and the idea is to create and offer information for all the people that can arrive to our website. As you know, basically uh, the patients and the families when they receive the diagnosis and before this moment, they used to go to the internet to try to find uh, information about the symptoms or about the condition. The idea of this uh, public layer or this public information in the shared forward is to create the resources that we consider are reliable for the users. Because you know, on the internet, you can find good information, but sometimes not very good information. This project is led by a pediatric hospital we have patient organizations in the consortium, we have experts, and the idea is to bring uh, and collect all uh, our knowledge to bring to all of you the resources that we consider that are part of the training and the education for the patients and the, and the families. The second goal that you can read here is about to share. It's very important when you are suffering a rare condition, find a peer to interchange to have a social and an emotional support because your life changes usually dramatically when you know what is the name of the condition. And this is the moment when you start to have new and a lot uh, of uh, questions. If you can find a peer that can understand what are, uh, what are your feelings, what uh, is your suffering, this is also, we said here in, in the hospital, part of the treatment that you can receive because sometimes we don't have a medical treatment but the social and emotional support, it's very useful and it's an it in the, in the collective of rare conditions. In this layer, we are going to build a community to try to find these peers, and these peers can have many different meanings. Perhaps it appears it's someone with your condition, perhaps it's someone that also is a, a caregiver, or perhaps it's someone that specifically beyond uh, be a, a caregiver, or, or um, be suffering the same condition, you need to uh, make a specific questions. This layer is addressed to connect people and to uh, offer the opportunity to interchange uh, the knowledge between individuals and small groups. And the third layer that is the heart of the project is research. Basically, in the field of rare diseases, we have a very dramatic uh, data that it's the statistic that summarizes that basically only 10% of the rare conditions have a basic and solid uh, knowledge about the condition. It means to know what is the natural story of the condition, uh, to identify what is the cause of the disease. 80% of them are rare conditions, but there are a lot of uh, work to do in order to change this 10% in a high number because we need to know the conditions to try to invest resources, to try to investigate uh, potential treatments. Not always, you know, we can uh, achieve the objective to, to cure the condition, but at least to make easy the life with a better conditions uh, during the daily life. This is the proposal of this layer to promote research projects. And uh, the idea is to collect all this knowledge that I mentioned previously that patients and families can have in a secure and, and private environment and help the different clinicians and researchers that are behind the project to uh, understand the, the condition and secondly, to try to increase, make new questions in order to promote other parallel uh, research initiatives. This is the heart of the project 
And, you know, if we invest in research, it's sure that in, we don't know sometimes uh, the time, but in a, in a midterm, perhaps we can change you know, the, the course of the conditions because in most of these conditions, we don't have any therapeutic option to bring to the, to the patients. In this case, you know, the, the limited number of patients, it's something that don't help for the pediatric hospitals, for the research centers. And in this case, it's uh, very crucial and very important to try to involve as much patients we can because we are speaking about rare conditions and it means that sometimes in one country, we don't have uh, the enough number to uh, develop a research project. For this reason, this platform are going to allow to connect patients around the world. And it's crucial to have a significant sample of patients to collect this data, to analyze, to empower and educate the families through the different uh, outcomes of this analysis and bring to the research community this information because sometimes this information can be used in the process to analyze and to test a new treatment. If we move forward in this slide, you can see here what is the ecosystem in which uh, patients with a rare condition are living. We have in Europe a good uh, initiative that are the European reference networks, the ERNs. For sure, we have the clinicians, researchers, and all the ecosystem that is connected with the health system, the health professionals, the public health representatives. But on the other hand, we have a huge number of stakeholders that can support, can make feasible the research, and can uh, offer all the resources and skills that sometimes patients and families need to be involved in this kind of initiatives. I'm speaking about the patient's organizations, the patient advocates, and the uh, volunteers that sometimes are people that are invisible, but are doing a great and a huge work to uh, increase the awareness about uh, these conditions. To test this new platform that it's addressed to collect this clinical information to increase the knowledge that we have about uh, rare conditions, we decided uh, to work with two pilot of group of conditions. Instead to work in an individual uh, basis, the idea is to work uh, by groups of conditions because sometimes the, system, the, the symptoms can be common and sometimes also the, the treatments. The first group is going to be the neuromuscular disorders. You can read here in the slides the different diseases that we are going to study. Some of them are more frequent considering that are in the box of the rare conditions, but there are others that are ultra rare diseases. Social media can bring the opportunity to disseminate that we are going to develop these research projects to arrive to the families and to connect these people that are around on the social media and in the digital world and move them to this private and secure environment that it's going to be the research uh, platform Share for Rare. The second, uh, here you can read also uh, and identify what are the, the main uh, organs affected in these uh, diseases. And the second uh, group of diseases are going to be the rare uh, tumors, pediatric rare tumors, including pediatric melanoma and other, and other conditions. All this information is included in the website of the project. If you are uh, watching this uh, webinar, and you are part of the ecosystem that it's connected with these conditions, you are welcome to join to the platform. But in any case, remember, rare, uh, Share for Red is addressed to all the people, not only to the patients and caregivers connected with these two group of conditions, neuromuscular disorders and rare tumors. And you can also request the access. The access to this private environment is going to be ready at the beginning of the year. And now, if you want to follow the different updates of the project, you can join us through the newsletter that the first one is going to be launched in a, in a few days. This is the planning of activities that we are going to develop in this project, the main and the, and the most important activities. The project is going to last until the end of, the, of 2020. Here you can read that we are working in the first year of the project. This, this year, because the project was launched the 1st uh, of January. We are working with the patients. As I said, uh, research and patients are the heart of this project. And we are developing this platform with the involvement of patients and patients advocates. 
we are so proud to have them in the project. And this is the way that we know that we need to work in these initiatives. We need to work not for the patients, we need to work with the patients. Also, we are going to perform along the project two hackathons. It means that we are going to celebrate two big uh, important activities to involve different experts, not only patients for sure, because they are going to be there, but also people from the IT field, uh, clinicians and other professionals. We are going to bring them to big questions and important services that we want to include in this platform. And together, because the value of this platform is the collective intelligence, we are going to develop these new services for the Share for Air platform. The first uh, hackathon is going to be performed in the summer of the next year, and in the summer of the last year, in, two, uh, in 2020, the second one. The, the development of the platform is uh, working at this moment, as I say, and we expect to launch the platform at the beginning of uh, the next year. And remember, the pilot projects, specifically uh, the diseases in wood, we are going to collect this huge and very important amount uh, of clinical data, are going to be regarding rare tumors, pediatric rare tumors, and neuromuscular diseases. Further information about the specific conditions are in the website uh, of our project. What is the last purpose or aim of uh, these uh, research initiatives that we are going to perform in the Sharp for Rare project? You can see here in the slide that there is a sample of, uh, in the wall of patients. Remember that we, if we are speaking about very ultra rare diseases, this number is going to be very, very small, even if we join all the patients around the world. We are going to achieve a, a specific sample in our platform because you know that not all the people uh, have no, the, the, the potential to access to, to the internet. This number we uh, expect that will be very significant for, for the project. And the last, last uh, objective I'm proposed and is to increase this medical knowledge and try also to recruit patients for other specific projects. For example, I say that with the data that we can collect through the patients, we can improve or in some cases describe the natural story of the condition. It means that we are going to have a specific uh, clinical data from patients and if in the future, for example, there is a new potential treatment for these patients and we know what uh, of these patients are uh, in the same page of the inclusion and exclusion criteria for a trial, we can invite them to participate in this study or to, con or to contact with the hospital that is going to perform this mm -hmm. trial. This is one opportunity for these patients at, uh, at the end of this uh, project to offer them this uh, opportunity to connect with these centers that can perform other projects connected with the disease that they are suffering. And the most important thing, and this is a cross cutting uh, objective of this uh, project and the platform, is to improve the quality of life of the patients and, and the family. Because remember, we are speaking about children, and when a child or a young person is suffering a rare condition, the whole family is suffering. The same with adults, but the, the questions and the suffering is different when uh, a, a kid that it's not expected because it's not natural to, to suffer a rare condition have this uh, health problem. And now it's the time to uh, introduce the different social medias that are connected with our platform that we expect uh, can work as a big, big speaker in the rare uh, diseases community to spread the word about the share for rare. Suzanne, it's your time. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Begonia, for the explanation of our Share for Rare project. I don't have very much to add. I just want to add that if you have any questions or you want to have more information regarding the Share for Rare project, you can always look us up on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn as well. Our YouTube channel will be soon available because this stream will be made available there. And our website, shareforrare.org, and you can always uh, just email us using info at shareforair.org. So that brings us to pretty much almost the end of our webinar. Um, I'm just trying to summarize what we just went through all. First of all, we tried to educate uh, all of us about 
the different platforms that you can use considering social media. Then you actually have three steps to define your target audience, to choose the channel that you want to, uh, to engage on and to create your message. And this handy, how do you call that, image will come in good. For example, Twitter can be used for microblogging. A social site is it, it is, and you can use a lot of emojis or whatever. And Facebook is more about creating a community. So it's more friendly tone of voice. You can share like videos, you can share polls, you can have private conversations in private groups. You have Instagram as well, which is more about social sharing, which is more pictures, very, which more, much more like visually uh, engaged. And LinkedIn is primarily business orientated, especially for healthcare professionals and all the clinicians. If you want to reach them, LinkedIn is the place that you can reach them best. Um, I think that that is pretty much it. If you have any questions considering this social media webinar, you can always ask them or you can email them afterwards. And um, I'd like to tell more about the next webinar that we're having. It's on October 17th and then Bettina Rill, which is the chair of the Melanoma Patient Network Europe, will give a webinar about following scientific news for patient advocates and especially how to read scientific newspapers and how to get along with other congresses. So thank you very much for participating. Uh, as you can see, the slides will be sent to you shortly. And um, thank you all, and goodbye.